Hey everyone, Kelly Leon here and I just received this in the mail. It just got dropped off. Luckily, no snow on it. Sadly, didn't come greatly through the mail and this is a little bit concerning, but here is the sketch box for February. Let's get it open and see what's inside. Okay. Luckily, everything's wrapped up in this tissue paper, so I hopefully nothing's gotten lost in the mail. But, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, Sketchbox Premiere for Tinted Graphite. Ooh, so this is our February box. And here, for those who want to see what's in the box, just real quick, I'll hold this here. It looks like we're gonna have a lot and lot of messy products. <laughs> For anyone who's worked with graphite, graphite is not the cleanest and constantly have making sure that your fingers are not covered in it. Here is the beautiful artwork for this box. It's gorgeous. I love the feel and just... When, it's funny because when I think graphite, I don't think of this. This is a very like sort of sumi paint, sumi artwork. Here it is by Casey Murphy. And there's her information. Okay. Now, let's see what we got in this box. First up, we have the Cretic Color Watercolor Graphite Set. Looks like it's a set of watercolor markers. It says, this Sketchbook exclusive pocket set comes with two graphite pencils and a primary set of tinted graphite and an Aqua Graph White Lightning Pencil. Ooh. So it all comes very well prepared, well packaged. We've got a lovely info sheet talking about how the different pieces work. And there's the English part. I haven't never heard of like graphite color. So this is gonna be really interesting. Doo -doo -doo. Very well packed in here. <laughs> very well packed. These are not gonna run to come out. Oh, and they're even checked. And here's this wonderful box, nice silver box. And here is our set. Let's get this open. Okay, okay. So, pull this up here. Roll these so you can see all their graphic graphics so they look like they're all HBs and we have two non-colored or like a light and a dark a red a blue a green and what they call the white lightning which I'm really interested to see um, cool so we'll start with the light one and we're just gonna doo -doo, come in down here and we'll just Texture wise, it has a very nice feel. It feels a little soft, like with most watercolor pencils, where it sort of has that um, like hard crayon feel to it. Okay, so here is very light with additional pressure. Okay. So that is our light one. And then we have a darker one. Not too much difference off the bat, but as we apply the pressure, we really can see where the difference in these two colors are. Okay. And now we have our colored ones. So we have a red, which still has a graphite in it. It's like they've added the color into the graphite. You can see it very faintly in the color of it. It doesn't come across greatly in the camera, but I wonder if when we add the water, if we're going to see that color come through more. Okay, then we have the blue version. This would be a really interesting... You can see how this one is still coming through gray and graphite-y, but it's a bit cooler than what we were next to the red. So when you're drawing, it looks 
like if you're not adding the water right away that you'll be able to tell out that pretty quickly okay and then we have the aqua green and you can see that they have a very nice spread on them this one's got a slight green tint to it and their tips are very fine and they can do quite well detailed as you see with the writing of the names. I'm not going to color in the white because the white for me feels like it wants to be a activator over the water or maybe on top of something else. So I'm going to hold off on drawing the white until we get to add some water to these. Okay, I'm just going to grab our handy dandy little water brush from I think this was November's box. Either November's or December's box had inks. And let's get this guy activated. And we're going to start with the light one first. Okay. So here we have the light one. It reacts like you would with a watercolor colored pencil. It sort of takes the pigment and moves it around, but you still have a pretty hard shape of where the original draw was. And just clean off the brush. We're gonna go on to the darker version. Just keep these pencils up. And yeah, the darker version is like you would assume. It's darker, it's more vivid. But overall, color-wise, it's just a, a saturation difference between these two. Okay, moving on to the colored graphite though. Let's see how this works. Okay, so as soon as the water hits it, you can feel that it has a darker tone to it, more red in it. It's not really coming great through the camera. I would say that it's more of a mauve color. It's like if you just slightly mixed in a little bit of red watercolor with an in, like an archival ink. It doesn't, it, I assure you that there is a slight color difference, like maybe a 5% saturation difference into the red. Let's see how the blue does. Well, the blue right off the bat clearly has a stronger pigment presentation mixed in. That is no doubt a very nice blue to go with your graphites. And just cleaning off the brush once more, make sure we got the blue off. We come into our greens. Even the green one has a greater reaction than the red one does. So not, not thrilled with the red. The green and the blue really come out well. The two tones of the gray I'm not really wowed with. Um, Definitely, if you want to use your darker one, you're going to get your darker tones. You'll never really reach your darker tones with your lighter marker, with your lighter colored pencil. Okay, um, I'm going to let those dry for a minute and we'll come back and we'll test the white lightning pencil on that in a moment. Uh, so we're going to move on to the Derwent pencils. We have two? Yes, two. So we have what's called the graphite tint pencils in ivy and ivory and chestnut so it's another set of water soluble color pencils or water soluble pencils created to create subtle desaturated swaths of color use them dry for detail work or activate with water for more vibrancy okay so this was all the creative color so here over here we'll have the uh, green well right off the bat they don't have that charcoal uh, graphite color that darker color and they definitely have a bit of more resistance uh, their lead feels a bit harder than the uh, the creative color and it definitely seems more vibrant I'm very happy with the Derwent line marker maker that they provided in one of the previous boxes and I'm curious to see how the rest of the brand does so that is the ivy Oops. Ivy. So once again, great with little details, great with the swatch. 
this one has more of the graphite color feel in it. I wonder if the green just can stand on its own more. But we definitely have more of that graphite gray in there. And this one is the chestnut. Okay. Handy dandy little wordle marker. And let's see how this reacts. It makes a very pretty green. This green is very vivid. It'll look beautiful paired with the, with the uh, blue over here. Out of all the colors so far, this is definitely the more vibrant, I would say, of this set. It's not exactly like neon or something that's going to be overall like extremely poppy. But in the scheme of this graphite coloring, this is the brightest of the colors so far. But who knows what else was in the box? Uh, the pigment is very happy. It's taken me a little bit of while to clean off the brush. Okay, here we go. And here is the chestnut. Okay, this one pops quite a lot too. I was a little worried that with the darker tones we were seeing in the colors, that this would have a muddy effect, but this is actually really quite nice. A little darker, more into the brown area. So you got your trees and stuff like that that we can play with with the greens and, I don't know, go water with the blue sky. Mountains seem to be a good way to go based on the, the art provided uh, from the materials of this box. But overall, I'm really happy with these colors. It's a nice little palette. The red, even as it dries, really isn't popping to me yet. But we'll see what else we got. Okay, the next up we have a Spectra Noir. Okay, here we are. Spectral Nar color twi uh, tint. Uh, Cafe au latte. So we have another brown. It looks like it's going to be a little bit um, mm, less saturate. And so this color uh, as a first art supply acts traditionally like a watercolor pencil when dry, but it can achieve the subtle values when wet. Try in combination with a chestnut pencil to really create skin tones. Hmm, that'll be fun. I'm trying to do a self-portrait with all the different materials that each box provides and hopefully at the end of the year I'll have like 12 nice little self-portraits. But um, so keep an eye out for that. This is definitely much harder, like it's got a, a stiffer feel. Um, it's. It's definitely much harder, whereas these feel like softer when you're putting them on the paper. This one, you can go super light with. Like as you see, it's just barely coloring the paper there because of how easy it goes on with the pressure. But when you get up here, it's it like grabs the paper and you can see it's like, it's gotta stick to it a little bit. Okay, let's see how that looks with some water on it next to the chestnut. Looks like we've got uh, more of a yellow tone in here. Which definitely will aid itself light nicely to some skin tones coming up. Definitely some highlights and play with it. It's a very different medium to try to mix colors with the color 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 pencils versus a palette because the palette you can get to the color you want and then apply it. It's going to be an interesting challenge to see how I can mix the colors on the drawing itself. So like I said, keep an eye out. We'll see how uh, my skin tones come out on my on that picture. Okay, the next we have another Derwent product. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, here it is. We have two little graphic graphite tint. We have indigo, dark indigo, and juniper. It says, uh, this is a new item for Derwen, so testing out some brand new items. <laughs> I can already tell the bag has graphite marks all around, so this is gonna be one that might be a little messy when dealing with. In fact, let's just, yeah. So this is a, a, a slightly messier product, so just be aware of that when you're painting with it. 
Um, the graphite tint pans offer a traditional watercolor experience with tinted graphite, using the pans to, reef, to fill in backgrounds or large areas of color. Okay. Um, just looking at them, I'm going to guess that this is our dark indigo and that's our juniper. Just got a little bit of brown. Let's clean that off. No, it probably won't be the worst thing in the world. Okay, so here we have our, what I'm going to assume is the indigo. I'm just approaching it like I would any watercolor. And it does get everywhere, <laughs> unlike watercolors. Okay, so this is a really pretty indigo and it does react a lot like watercolors. I can have a lot of fun with this color. I love the darker blues, but it looks like it is drying much lighter than it went down. I'm not a fan of the, uh, in watercolors, the hard palettes. I'm not greatly familiar with it, so I don't know if I'm lacking in technique on trying to get this to feel, feel darker. But it is a beautiful color in the scheme of this. It really all works well. And it's going to great create quite a, a fun mix. But I wouldn't call the final painting we're going to be doing with this uh, neon in any lack of the word, in any sense of it. Just cleaning off my brush. There we go. Looks like uh, it's going to take me a little while to get off the, uh, the cafe latte off my brush. I wonder if there's a different pigment that's holding on a bit longer than all the other pigments are. Okay, here we have what they're calling is the juniper. Looks a little silvery to begin with. Let's get a good, good mix on here. Once again, it it gets on everything, so just be careful. Okay, here's a nice purple. Let's shift this up a little. So you can have more work space. It's a very pretty purple. It feels a little bit, you can tell in the palettes, slightly in the light, that they have a sparkle to them. It's probably, my guess, the graphite, because graphite always has a bit of a sheen to it. Um, it's curious to see how that's going to end in the complete finished product because um, here I'm going to swing over here to my area where I'm closing it. But in the graphite one, you can see as I'm cleaning off my pen, there's a lot of like little sparkles, like little, little dots hanging out in here. And I'm just curious overall if that's going to make any finished product a little grainy. But I won't know until uh, until we're in the middle of making a project and seeing how it reacts. Okay, dokie. The we have two more products. We have the Prince Tin Heritage Round Six Brush. It's a classic watercolor brush. The brushes can hold a large amount of water. It's a nice round brush hold a uh, large amount of water based medium it's great for detail or a large amount areas uh, I don't have a jar of water with me to try this but I will definitely be using this brush to paint my picture um, I love round brushes it uh, as it says in the description it gives a great sense of uh, either wash or detail and the color of this wood is really quite pretty so I look forward to trying that one out and then our last thing is, uh, I, I don't even know how to start talking about this guy. So we'll just read the description straight out. It's a drawing graphite putty. This water soluble putty acts similar to an ink stick as you can add water to create a wide range of values. Try diluting it to create subtle gradients or mix with other water soluble mediums to create your own graphite tint. Uh, a little scared to open this honestly because it looks like it's gonna be really messy it's uh, vacuum sealed it feels like 
modeling clay and as you can see when I push my fingers into it it sort of holds that position. I don't know if that's because it is that dense to begin with or if the vacuum sealing of it has uh, has compressed it so much that it's acting like a putty. Okay, but it wouldn't be a unboxing if we didn't try all the products. There you go. Pop some. There you go. Just cut off the edge here. Oh wow. <laughs> this is this is really hard. Like, look how chunky this is. We're gonna just drop this on the paper here. Um, it definitely comes across more as a modeling clay than anything else. Um, I wonder if it's more like the hard sumi sticks that you have to sit there and you have to like grind or if this is something that's... I'm going to go ahead and take a wild guess and say a little probably goes a long way. It has a very nice darkness quality to it. But once again, it's got that glitter sort of feel in there. I don't know if you can read it on the camera as much as I can see it here, but it's it's very glittery. <laughs> um, and yes, a, a little goes a long way. I'm going to be have fun trying to see. I'm also curious, based on the vacuum sealing, if this dries out and becomes much harder to work with. But uh, once again, that's... A very new, very new idea of of working with a a pigment, just like we've had the the watercolor crayons before. They they love to put pigment in new methods to figure out how it works. Um, very interesting, <laughs> very very interesting. Okay, um, we'll be curious to see how that turns out in the artwork for later. Okay, last thing is we're gonna go back to the Aqua Graft White Pencil from the Crete Color. Now that these have dried, I wanna go over them and see if uh, this really works on top of them. Let's see. So just going back right on top of it. Mm, no, but we're gonna lay down a little bit of a base on these. <laughs> And see, maybe if this helps with the the darker quality that these, like this will be your lightener. Like instead of diluting your water to get a lighter tone, I wonder if these will work better like that. Uh, since that's full of black right now, I'm just going to grab another one of my water pens. There you go. And we're going to apply the white here. Looks like I'm gonna have fun trying to figure out how this white works. Uh, in fact, why don't we just grab last, last month or maybe the month before, we were given this book. It was the, the Halua sketchbook for watercolors. And just because it's a different color paper, I wonder if this will come out better. Okay, so on your non-traditional white paper, this looks like it'll be really fun to play with. And let's just add some water to that. There we go. So you can take it down, like go in and do the e your details and then take back some of your line, the harshness of your lines. Overall, I don't think it's going to work great on top of the colors. As we can see, it just, they didn't really do much. Uh, whether it was hard or wet, uh, the white didn't, isn't like a, a, a gel pen or a gouache on top of your colors. It's something that I guess is going to be better used on a tinted color of paper. Okay, so that's the box for today. Just to go backwards over it, we have this really fun uh, graphite putty, which is, back it up some, down here. And then we have the Princeton Heritage Brush, which we did not use during this 
procedure. I should remember to check to see if there's a brush first and use the brush to test out the materials. Live and learn, right? Okay, so drop that there. And then we have the Derwent Graphin Graphite Tint uh, uh, pans, which are very interesting. They made this beautiful purple and beautiful blue here. And then we have a Spectrum Noir Color Tint Cafe Latte Pen Pencil, which provided us with this tone here. Then we have the two Derwent Graphite Tint in the ivy, Ivory and the Chestnut. There we go. And they provided these two beautiful tones up here. And then we had the complete uh, Crate Color Water Graphite six piece set with three colors. We had the green, the blue, and the red. That worked very nicely. They're right up in here. The red was a little bit looser than I would expect of a red. And then it came with the two dark and light regular toned graphite pencils. It also came in this wonderful uh, case here to keep it all together. Oh, and with the six set, we also have the graphite white as well. Um, it's going to be a very subtle one. It, watercolor seems like a great medium to work with in these tones. So I think the color palette really lends itself to the medium that they want us to try it out in. Um, yeah, and that's it for today. So it was fun looking through this box. It's going to be fun trying to create a self-portrait from these. And if you liked it, subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, which you are excited to try in the box and keep an eye out for the self-portrait where the materials will be used. Thank you so much guys and have a great day.